Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. We are in the presence of the Almighty God. We are expecting God to speak into our lives. We are confident that where two or three gather together, God never lied when he said he's going to be there. So as you are joining in, welcome into this broadcast. Let me know who has just come into the broadcast. You can type amen so that I can be able to acknowledge your presence because this is an interactive service. It's not just about me to be just preaching. You know, we need to interact, you know. And also, secondly, share this broadcast with your friends. If you have friends that you can share this link with them, share so that at least they may be able, they may be able to partake in what God is about to do tonight. God has never disappointed us. He has never let us down. Every time we come together as believers, God always speaks. God always speaks. As we come together like this, as we are in the presence of God like this, God always speaks. And he doesn't just speak, but he also brings to pass that which he has said to us. Welcome, welcome into this broadcast. May God bless you and thank you for joining in. And I know that God is about to do something extraordinary. God is going to change your life. God is going to move. God is going to do things that are going to work for you. He's about to change your story. He's about to change your story. He's about to change your story. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We are ready tonight. We are ready tonight in the studio ah, to be a blessing in your life. We are ready tonight in the studio to be the blessing in your life. Please share this broadcast with others. I will ask you to share this broadcast. Don't just, you know, enjoy what God is about to do tonight without sharing. Share this broadcast with others and let me know who is coming. It's good, you know, to know who is in the broadcast. Like you can see me. Unfortunately, I can't see you, but I can see your comments. Oh my God, oh my God. May God bless you tonight. I am not going to waste time because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it because we are not gathering in vain. That is something that God wants to do in our lives. That is why every time we gather in this manner, the Spirit of God honors our coming together. Because the Bible says, forsake not the assembling together with the saints. So we are coming together virtually. We are meeting. We are together in this broadcast. And may God bless you as we're going to read our word tonight in the book of John chapter 5. Our topic is dealing with padlocks of misfortunes. Dealing with padlocks of misfortunes. Tonight, we are going to deal with those padlocks. You see, life has different kinds of padlocks. I don't know what is your padlock. Maybe your padlock is in your finances. Maybe your padlock is in marriage. Maybe your padlock is in your business. Maybe it's in raising your children. You can't raise your children. You can't do anything. Oh, I can see. I can see that the man of God, the prophet, Prophet, Prophet Flavius Dyke Matale. Oh, men of God, we are looking forward to have you into this platform next week. Men of God, get ready. Get ready to be used by God. I know you are a genuine prophet. You are the man that has been used by God for such a long time. Since I've known you, God has been using you. And may God bless you and may God continue to use you in your ministry and the entire world. Welcome, welcome, men of God. And if you have just joined us, please just type amen or something else so that I may know that you are in this platform tonight. 
Ah, for God is about to do something. This is not vanity. We are not coming together in the name of a man. Ah, we are coming in the name of the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose from the dead so that he may monitor his will and make sure that whatever that it is, his will comes to pass. Oh my God, I'm so excited that tonight the Spirit of God is going to move in this broadcast dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes. In life we encounter different kinds of challenges. In life we encounter different kinds of misfortunes. The devil is trying by all means to resist what God has intended to do in our lives and through our lives in this planet earth. For we are not just born to become a number on this earth. We are born for a purpose and each and every one of us is dealing with something. You are dealing with something. I'm dealing with something. We might not be dealing with the same thing. Oh, I can see. I can see the prophetess of God in the platform who has just joined us through Facebook. Mapule Forbes, oh woman of God, may God bless you. Such a great woman of God, such a prayer warrior. This woman, if she prays for you, your life will never be the same again. She prayed for me. She stood with me. She supported my ministry. Welcome, welcome woman of God. May God bless you. Stay with us. Stay with us tonight. God is leading us into something that is going to transform our lives forever. Tonight we are dealing with padlocks of misfortunes enough is enough i am tired i believe you are tired and if we are tired enough tonight we'll stay together and hear what god is saying in his word the word of god will never miss a target whatever it is that you and i are being padlocked in god is going to break he's going to deal with those padlocks God is going to change your life. He's going to change my life. We are not meant to be padlocked. We are not meant to be caged. That's not the will of God. That is not the purpose of our being on earth. We are not purposed to become slaves of certain mentalities, slaves of certain groups of you know thoughts where people think you don't deserve this. If you try to mount to something, they bring you down through witchcraft and all kinds of sabotages. We are meant to move forward. We are meant to show forth the praises of God. We are meant to show forth the glory of God. When God uses you, the world will see that God is indeed, even in our days, doing great things. He might want to use you through your business. You might not have to be a preacher. He might want to use you through raising those kids that you have. Maybe your calling is to raise that crippled child. Keep on being faithful. Don't throw in a towel. Don't let the devil padlock you. You need to know that God tonight has released an anointing that is going to unlock you. God is going to unlock. God's anointing is going to deal with the padlocks of misfortunes. Tonight, it is the expiration of that torment in your life. For the Spirit of God in this broadcast is entering into your home, in your comfort, right where you are. So that God may begin to minister. He has heard your cry. You cry to God. You pray to God. You have tried all kinds of givings. You have sown seeds. You you have tried to forgive people. You have gone through a lot so that you may have that experience of freedom in your life. And God says, I have seen your sacrifice. I have seen your tears. I have seen your faith. I have seen your prayers. I have seen everything that you have done. And now this is the time. This is the hour. Tonight it is an hour that is ordained by God. That God is going to deal with the padlocks of misfortunes in your life, in your business, in your your marriage in whatever that you're doing God is about to turn it around for your good for God is not in your life against you but he is in your life for you he's not against you but for you that is why tonight he has released me and sent me out to come and minister to you in this broadcast so that you may be able to encounter your answer Welcome, 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 my prophet Donovan, Donovan, Governor, God bless you, God bless you, from Peter Marisbeck in KZN, may God bless you, men of God, and your family, and your ministry, tonight, we are going to 
bask in the glory of God. We're going to swim in the glory of God. We're going to see what the glory of God is able to achieve in our lives. If Jesus did it for them, he can do it for you and I tonight. He can do it for many people in life. Oh, I can see, I can see the apostle of God, Lerato Lamini. May God bless you from Johannesburg. May God bless you, woman of God, such a great worshiper. One of the people that have worked so closely, that have seen that you are very anointed by God. Welcome, welcome and stay with us in this broadcast. May God help us tonight and speak to our lives. May the Spirit of God deal with the padlocks of misfortunes in our lives. And this is the day that God has ordained that our freedom is guaranteed. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 5. Oh my God, I'm so excited. John chapter 5, the Bible says, when we look at what the scripture says in verse 2, verse 3, verse 4 to verse 9, God is saying great things here. It is a story where Jesus walked into a place where it's called the pool of Bethesda, where people were just sick lying there. Listen to what verse 3 says. It says, in this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Why? Because there was an angel of God. The angel of God was stirring the water. The angel of God was stirring the water that whoever jumps in first, whoever jumps into the water first, that person is going to receive their breakthrough. Hallelujah. Rabbi Yoko Sadraba. Verse 4 says, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. This pool was dealing with the disease. People were going through uneasiness. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God through the stirring of the water by the angel was dealing with the disease. It might be a financial disease. It might be anything that is, you know, it's making your life so complicated, so unbearable, so frustrating. You know, you might not be enjoying ministry. You might not be enjoying family, business, raising your children. You might not be enjoying being in that community. You might not, you know, enjoying being in that company. Because there is this spirit that brings the dis-ease in your life. It makes things not to be ease. But God has sent an angel into that pool at the particular time and this night it is that particular time this broadcast is being broadcasted at the right time this is the right time for you to hear this message it is the right time for you to receive god dealing with your padlocks of misfortunes Tonight your life will never remain the same. Oh my God, oh my God. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 5. It says, Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity. 38 years. This man, oh my God. He has been suffering for 30. It doesn't say that he was, you know, 8 years old. He wasn't 38 years old. It was a man, not a boy, not a child. He could be 50 something. He could be 80 something. But he has been there for 38 years. For 38 years, he was sitting just nearby this pool. When Jesus saw him in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? It is the question that God is asking tonight. Do you want to be made well? In your business, do you want your business to be made well? Do you want your ministry to be made well? Do you want your children to be made well? Or health your body? Do you want your marriage? Do you want things around you to be made well? The Lord tonight has stirred up the waters. He has stirred up the waters in your favor. He has visited you. He has seen that you have stayed in your situation for many years. You are stuck in your situation and nothing is helping you. People have tried to comfort you. You have seen others making it through. You have seen others when the waters are being stirred. When the season comes for breakthrough, it used to happen for others. But for you, you have been struggling in your life. 
life and God is paying a visit into your situation tonight. He wants you to come out of that stagnation. He is dealing with the padlocks of your misfortunes tonight. Wow, what a privilege, what a privilege, what a privilege that tonight it has been ordained. This is not a game. We are not coming here to come and play. We are not playing church. You might be having your church somewhere. You might be a great person somewhere. But whatever that is bothering you, the Lord has gathered us together so that he may break those things in my life and in your life. This is the gathering where God is dealing with the padlocks of our misfortunes and we cannot afford to play church. We are in the presence of the real God. For in God there is no distance. As I minister from where I am right now, something great, something big is happening right in your situation. God is visiting that padlock in your finances. Every time you try to collect money, every time you try to save money, something comes and takes that money. Every time you try to raise your child in the right way, something else comes in. Your child has friends, bad friends, bad influences. You wonder, this is not my boy. This is not my girl. I did not raise my child like this because there is that padlock which is coming from Satan and his demons. People are being casting spells over your children, casting spells over your business, casting spells over your marriage, over your ministry. They are trying all they can because they are envious of you. They are jealousy. They are afraid. They are intimidated by seeing your future because they cannot stand you being successful. They cannot stand you being happy. They are happy when you are sad. They are happy when you are in sorrow. They are happy when you borrow money from them. They are happy when you ask and cry for help all the time. It is well with them when you always make phone calls and say, can you give me money for bread? Can you give me money for shoes? Can you give me money for this? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. God is about to do something extraordinary. Hallelujah, glory to God. Welcome, welcome my sister Tintualo. May God bless you. Thank you. Stay with us, stay with us. Tonight we are dealing, God is dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes in our lives. And God is saying you are coming out of that. God is removing that limitation. Those padlocks are being destroyed. Tonight, God is doing something extraordinary. Something the devil thought it wasn't going to happen because he locked and threw the key away. But Jesus went to hell. He went to hell and took the keys and began to open. Everybody's hell was open. People came out of their hell. Tonight, you are coming out of your hell. That padlock is being destroyed tonight. God is doing something. Is doing something in your life that your money, your friends and the comforts of people could not do. But he has paid a visit by himself. He has come by himself to do something extraordinary in your life. Welcome, welcome woman of God, Nelly Choke. May God bless you. Stay with us. God is dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes. Whatever that has been released over your family lineage, your family is being caged either in a certain disease that is happening. If you look back, it was like that from your great grandfather, from your grandfather, from your father. It is happening in you. You are seeing it in your children. You are seeing it even in your grandchildren. That Look tonight, it is going to be dealt with. Those misfortunes are expiring today. The activities of misfortunes, which are coming through this demonic enchantment and all the rituals that the devil people are trying to do against us. Tonight, the anointing of God is frustrating the plans of the devils. Their spells are being destroyed. Their witchcraft is being nullified. For who can come against us? If if God is on our side, who can come against us? They can try to come against us, but they will not stand. For God will always fight our battles. God will always come for us. He will always raise the bar. He will always frustrate them. The Bible says they shall come in one direction, but in seven directions, he scatters them. Even right now, as I minister this word, people are being scattered. They try to sabotage you in your workplace. 
They want it to be fired. They want it to be retrenched. They are trying all they can so that they can take your position. God is scattering them right now. That padlock which says you will lose your job. It has been broken. God is dealing with it right now. Your misfortunes are seizing right now. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God. They thought you would not enter through this door. But God is making this door open for you. God has a key. He has a key to open. He was, you know, he is going to make a way for you to cross to the other side of the fortunes that God has for you. That peace which you are looking for. That divine health you are looking for. That joy you are looking for. God is about to open the padlock and make it go through to the place of fulfillment. You have been living your life and sacrifice for everybody else, but nobody comes through for you. But God is about to do something extraordinary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, woman of God, Alex. May God bless you. May God bless you. Stay with us. 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 I can see my sister there, Shamalani. May God bless you. May God bless you. God is dealing with padlocks of stagnations, padlocks of misfortunes. God is about to change my life and your life. Our God is on our side. God is doing this thing right now because it has begun in the realm of the spirit. That is why a word had to be released. Let me tell you something. Words are a spirit. What I'm saying right now, it's a spirit. When they bless you they release words those words became a spirit that monitored your success every time you try to succeed they bring you down but tonight I am releasing a word that will destroy that will deal with the padlocks of misfortunes that whatever you touch it shall turn to gold even they try to rust at your life but God is going to polish your life your life is going to glitter your life is going to shine for the word of the Lord says arise shine for your light has come that light it is through the word of God. As I speak right now, God is expecting you right now to get ready to cross through this barrier that the devil has tried to embargo you against that which God has embedded in your spirit. There is success in your heart. There is success in your spirit. You know this is not my life. You know I should be somewhere in life. But the devil is a liar. No matter what he has tried to do, it can be an ancient padlock which has been there before. You know, your grandfather was there. It has, you know, it might be a curse. But God is breaking this generational curse and you will be the one to begin this generational blessing in your family because God is dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes in your life. You've been a laughing stock. Everybody has been making you a point of reference when they want to talk about someone bad or something bad. They used to give references of your story. Let me tell you something. Your story is a history right now. What you went through, God is turning it around. Around. God is coming to give you joy. He's coming to give you the ability to be able to get there because now he's dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes in life. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Like what Jesus did when he went to this pool of Bethesda, he found this man who was there for 38 years struggling, seeing others making through. Just like what is happening right now. You are seeing your friends are succeeding. You are seeing your friends are getting married. You are seeing your friends' businesses are succeeding. You are seeing your friends' children are making it in life. But what happens in your life? You are being attacked left and right. You are being bound. You do the right thing, but you're not appreciated. You, you know, you work hard, but you don't get promotion. Someone who is even lazy is being given a promotion. Is being given an increment, but you are always sidelined. Oh my God, you are coming out of that place of obscurity. God is taking you to a place where you shall be celebrated. You will see the fruits of your endurance. You will see the fruits of your faith in God because we are not having faith in vain. Whoever have faith in God, God said you can speak to this mountain and tell this mountain to throw itself to the sea. Right now you can speak into your padlocks. You know what you're going through. You know what is happening around you, your children, your business, your career, your own health your beloved one's health you know what you're going through and God wants you to speak right now that I am right now I am right now 
seeing my padlocks being dealt with right now. I am moving out of the place of misfortunes. I am moving to a place of fulfillment. I am going to enjoy the fortunes of God in my life. For God never brought you here on earth to be a laughing stock. There is something big, something great that God has in store for you. No wonder why you are going through these padlocks in life because the devil is afraid. He's intimidated by your success. He's intimidated by your victories. He doesn't want you to celebrate. He doesn't want you to smile or to, you know, to rejoice because of what is happening in your life. He always brings one torment to another torment. He will bring one sickness to another sickness. He will bring one failure to another failure because you must remain in sorrow. But the devil is a liar tonight. The anointing of God through this broadcast is dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes. God is saying, I have come like Jesus Christ went to the pool of Bethesda and found this man. The Lord has come into your closet. He has come into your house. He has come into your living room. God wants to do this thing for you. And Jesus said to him in verse 8, the Bible says, Jesus said to, to this man in verse 8, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory to God. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, woman of God. Dr. Monica Ndala, may God bless you. Stay with us. This is the night where God is doing something extraordinary. The only thing that God requires of us to do, he's saying, rise, rise, rise. Take up your bed and walk. You have been taking other people's beds and let them walk. You have helped others to rise and do the right thing by taking their bed and walk but you are remaining down with your bed of sickness with your bed of misfortunes with the padlocks that are tying you to your sick bed that are tying you to that poverty that are tying you to that limitations that are tying you to that failure you are rising and falling because the devil is against your success he's against your victories he's against your celebration he's against the will of God in your life God is saying to you you have done for others, you have made others to rise and take their beds and walk. This is your night to rise yourself. Take your bed and walk yourself. This time you have to do it. You have helped others. And God is saying, I want to help you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Rise, rise. Take a decision. Take a decision. Take a decision. Right now, take a decision. Don't remain there. Yes, 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 yes. Feds are saying that your situation will not come aright. But God is saying to you, hallelujah. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. And let the weak say I am strong. Are you weak in that situation? Has it come to weaken you financially? Has it come to weaken you medically? Has it come to weaken you in raising your children? God is saying, rise. Take your bed and walk. It's not time to continue mourning over that. Whatever you lost, you have lost it. Just like the days of the locusts and the canker worms, which came to devour whatever that you have. You should know tonight God has ordained this night to deal with the padlocks of your misfortunes. You are going to recover. You are going to recover that which you have lost. You are going to have it back. God is going to give you more. For God is able to give us more abundantly above that which we can even ask or imagine. God is a great God. He is restoring that which the padlocks have delayed us from gathering in our lives. It is never too late. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. It is not in the age. It is in the power of God. It is in your believing what God is saying, when God says, rise, take your bed and walk, you need to obey right now. When God speaks, he expects you to do something. This is the right story that shows us that whoever believes first, it works for them. But whoever doubts, you will see, you will see this thing happening in the lives of others. Don't wait to see if this thing is going to work.
You want to hear who's going to testify what God has done for them. You better jump into the pool. This is the pool that is stirred by God. This broadcast has the atmosphere that is going to deal with the padlocks of your misfortunes. You'd rather believe right now that the Jesus Christ who has seen your many years of struggle, your many years of depression, your many years of oppression, your many years of rejection, your many years of all misfortunes. He has visited you tonight. He has come tonight and he's saying, rise, take your bed and walk. When God commands you, you better obey. Faith without works is dead. Don't just say, I believe and you do nothing. The sign that you believe is you hearing, receiving and doing. So God is saying to you, in that very situation which you are in right now, in that misfortune, God is dealing with all the padlocks of your misfortunes. He's saying to you, rise, take your bed and walk. You have helped others to rise. You have helped others to take their beds and walk. This is your time. Take your bed and walk. Have you heard people say, oh, I've helped other people. I've been in the lives of others. I have assisted them, but nothing is happening in my life. God is saying, rise, take your bed and walk. Because this is an you know, ordained time that God has ordained. God has seen the many years of the cycles of torment which were happening in your life. Every time you try to do something, it collapses. Every time you dig a well, the devil comes and soil it down. But this is the time where God is saying, what you're doing is going to succeed. What you're doing is going to be successful. No devil shall shut what God has switched on. No one can bring you down. For God is on your side. Only thing you need to do. Rise. Take your bed. And walk. Some people they rise. And do nothing. They just stand and say hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe God is going to do But they do nothing. Hey. Take your bed. Your bed. And walk. That's what God wants you to do. That's what God wants me to do. All of us as we hear this word right now. We need to respond. There has to be action. After you have heard the word of God. Begin to act. God will never bring the answer. Unless you act to what God is bringing towards you. God's part is to speak the word. Our part is to walk the word. Is to live the word. Living according to the word. That's what God expects you and I. Because tonight he is dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes. That is the God that we serve. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He will never change. He is, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He is your God, is my God. He will not abandon you. He will not abandon me. He has no favorite. Whoever believes in him. For the Bible says. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him. Whoever believes in Whoever. Not some people. But whoever believes in him. Shall have life. Eternal life. And eternal life. It does not start when you are in heaven. It starts right now. Because eternal doesn't have the beginning. It doesn't have the ending. It's like a cycle. A cycle has no beginning. It has no ending. But God. In the same vein. He is saying the cycle. That the devil has put you in. Into that eternal. You know damnation. That eternal torment. God is breaking that you know, cycle. He is dealing with the padlocks. Of your misfortunes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Oh I can see. The woman of God there. Shawnee. May God bless you. God bless you my sister. Stay with me. Stay with me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I can see the apostle from Ghana. Apostle. Oh, welcome, welcome. Apostle Edward. May God bless you. From Ghana, Accra. God bless you. Rise. Take your bed and walk. Ah, oh, hallelujah. 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 Stop making excuses. And every time I go to church, 
Whatever has been preached, it happens to others. God is saying, rise, take your bed and walk. You have a responsibility. And if you do this thing, that is in the next verse, the last verse before I close, verse 9. And immediately the man was made well, not tomorrow, not the following day. There are things that will need the process, will need days and hours, will need weeks and months. And that's what we have come to believe. Ah, God knows what I'm going through. And you're doing nothing. Ah, I believe that God is going to change my situation. And you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. But if you rise, if you rise, if you rise, if you rise and take your bed and walk, immediately you are guaranteed to be made well. This is another secret. For instant miracles. The Bible says. A double minded man. Shall not receive from the Lord. If you question first. If you question it first. It will take you a process. You have to rectify. You have to rectify your unbelief first. And you are delaying yourself. For somebody is living a life of delay. Always your things are delayed. Check. Your attitude towards the word of God. As I'm ministering right now, what are you thinking? What are you busy thinking? What are you saying in your mind? Can anything good come out of my situation? Can my business rise overnight? Can I be healed tonight? If I believe this man, don't believe me, believe the word of God. I'm not preaching myself. I preach the word of God. Believe God. God is saying, rise Take your bed and walk. Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. In verse 7, this man was making excuses. He said, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water stood up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. You ask yourself, if this man, it has been happening for 38 years, why can't he sleep next to the pool? Why can't he sleep next to the pool? So that when the angel comes and stirs the water, if he can't stand up, then he can roll. He can roll into the pool. If you can't jump into the pool, be close to the pool, roll into the pool, crawl into the pool. Oh my God, this man's mind was padlocked. Like many people's minds are padlocked. You are waiting for something from somewhere. You are waiting for someone to come and lay hands on you. What if you die before Sunday? You are waiting for your pastor to lay hands on you on Sunday. Even if they pray for you on a call, you don't believe the prayers that are coming through the phone call. You want them to come in and pour the bucket of oil so that you can be healed or delivered or get that blessing. You must learn to believe God there and there. Believe it there and there. Faith is a risk. That's why people who are carnal are afraid to take. When you are carnal, you will be afraid to take that risk, which is faith. Because you believe without seeing it happening first. That's what the Bible says. We don't walk by sight. But we walk by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. I don't have to see it physically first. But I have to see it spiritually first. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's why the spiritually blind people depends on their physical eyes before they can get excited about the word of God, before they can do something, before they can act, before they can respond to what God is saying. Don't wait for someone to do something so that you can be there. Rise up. Take your bed and walk. That bed has even become like a bath. It has a hole because you have been sleeping on that bed all your life. 
for 38 years. Even the springs there are destroyed because you, you are so heavy now. When you eat, it's obesity on top of that bed. You have become too religious. We have become too religious. You are in the church. You keep on receiving the word, but you do nothing about what has been preached. Yours is to, I receive, I receive, I receive. Meaning you receive the preaching, but you don't receive your legs acting on the preaching. You don't receive that. That instruction which says you must act. You don't receive that, you know, responsibility. You have to walk as God speaks to you. When God says jump, ask how high. Then you jump. This man stayed with an excuse that I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. You ask yourself, why didn't he just sleep at the edge of the pool? So that when the angel stares the water, he can just kulukutu into the water. Kulukutu into the water. You are waiting for you to, 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 to take your, your crashes. You are waiting for a wheelchair. Someone must push you. Roll. If you can't jump, roll. No excuse. If you can't jump, roll. 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 It's an insult before God for you to die the way you are, to die in that situation. God is not going to be happy with you dying in that situation. That is why you're not dead now. That is why, you, because of what you are in, it is the mercy of God that the thing is not killing you. God is giving you a chance to do something. And God has sent me tonight to say you must rise from your bed and walk. Do something. Do something. Stop blaming God and the devil and demons. Do something. It's in your obedience. Rise. Take this bed and walk. Don't say I have no one to do, you know, to, to, to take me to the pool. You are in the pool. That's eight years. That's eight years. You are a child of God. You've got five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years in the church. And you are still in that situation. Hi, come on. Something is wrong with the gospel that you are hearing. You are not appropriating what you are hearing. You are not applying what you are hearing. Something is wrong with that. You don't have a place for that word. You are just receiving from one ear and it gets out through the other ear. God is challenging us. He's saying enough is enough. I've come to deal with the padlocks of misfortunes. I've come to deal with the padlocks of misfortunes. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm about to close right now. I'm about to close right now. I'm about to close right now. I want you to look into that situation where the devil has padlocked you. Look into the misfortunes in your life. Tonight we're going to confront the thing that bothers us. This is the night of confrontation. We are going to confront the thing that frustrates us. The thing that stagnates us. We are tired of saying I believe and nothing happens. Because we are not rising. We are not walking. We are still in the bed. We are still in the bed. We are still in that religion. As long as I've gone to church, God knows. Yes, God knows that you are doing nothing. So tonight, we are going to act. Oh my God, we are about to act right now. And the devil around your business, around your finances, around your children, around your spouse, around your career is shaking right now. Because you are going to make this prophetic declaration over your life and you are going to act. You are going to act. This message is about those who are sick and tired of being sick and tired of remaining in the cycle of misfortunes. This is not for everybody. This is not a hype session. This is not a hype session where you come into, oh my God is good. God is going to do something. Life is going to change. This is not a hype session. It's not a religious circus where we come in, you know, and then monkey ourselves and nothing happens in our lives. 
We must be realistic. Face your devil and tell your devil, enough is enough. I've heard the word of God. Begin to speak right now. Begin to speak that devil in your finances, that devil in your children, that devil in your spouse, that devil in your career, that devil in your business, in every way. Speak to that devil right now and say, devil, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is dealing with all your padlocks. Begin to speak right now. Say, I am free. I am free from this. I am free from this chase. I am free from this stagnation. I am free from this sickness and disease. I am free from this poverty. I am free from this rejection. I am not going to live my life according to publicity stunt. I'm not going to perform in order to be accepted. If you don't like me, powwow. It's your own business. If they reject you, it is their own business. Stop chasing. Stop running after people who don't like you. Don't waste your time. Rise and walk. Rise and walk. Rise and walk. Don't stay in that place of misery and frustration. Rise and walk. Joy awaits you. Peace awaits you. Fulfillment awaits you. You need to rise. You must take a step. You can't remain there and think God is going to do something. He has spoken. You must do something. Begin to speak right now. Begin to prophesy right now. As I close this broadcast, I have a few minutes. As I close this broadcast, begin to prophesy right now over your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy over your children right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over them. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost deal with all padlocks, all padlocks of misfortunes in the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy right now their sickness and disease, their poverty, their stagnation. There are frustrations and rejections. Take them out. Take them out. As you have spoken, God give them strength. Let them be able to stand up, oh God. Let them be able to give them strength. Give them energy to rise, to rise, to rise and take their bed and walk, almighty God. Because right now, right now, instantly, instantly their situation is turning around. Instantly, something is happening in their lives. I declare and decree, something is happening in your life. God is changing your story. God is changing your story. Something great is beginning to germinate right now. They thought you not move from here. But God is opening that door. They thought you would remain poor. They thought you would remain frustrated. But God is taking you out of that. He is putting a smile in you. He is right now changing your tears of sorrow into the tears of joy. God is elevating you tonight out of your dungeon. My God, I see somebody's life right now being turned around. There's a deal that you are waiting for. To pass through. There's a deal that has to be signed. There's a deal that has to be signed. And there's been some delays. And God is causing the signature of the man who is refusing to sign. He is going to sign it. That deal is going to go through. You are making it by fire, by force. That devil who has used the padlock. To lock the hands of those who are supposed to help you. God is destroying in the name of Jesus. That padlock. In the name of Jesus. Somebody saying, I am sick. I've tried. I went to doctors. I went to different kinds of churches. I've been prayed for. I have tried all kinds of things. This sickness is not going away. Tonight, right now, I see that sickness being taken away from you. Tonight you are losing that sickness. Tonight you are losing poverty. Tonight you are losing stagnation, rejection. You are losing all these bad things in your life. You are losing them. Because God has made up his mind and ordained this night through this broadcast for me to speak to you. That enough is enough. He is dealing with the padlocks of your misfortunes. And you will testify a mother of testimonies. God doesn't joke. He doesn't come to joke in our lives. He doesn't joke. He has no time for jokes. 
He doesn't joke with the devil. He doesn't joke with whatever you go through. He has come right now, full force. This thing right now. Right now. Right now. Is getting away from you. Lift up your hands right where you are. And begin to receive. Begin to praise God. Begin to thank God. Appreciate God. You see, people are used to be hearing, hearing, and not appreciate what God has said in their lives. Appreciate God for this word. For verse 9 says, And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. That's what you must do. From this night, henceforth, you shall not be in your bed. You shall be walking. You shall be walking. Towards that thing God has promised you. I prophesy over your life. Right now. That padlock. That padlock. That padlock of Satan in your life. That padlock of sickness and disease is being destroyed. Welcome, welcome Apostle William. Momadou from Nigeria. What a great man of God. What a great man of God. Thank you for gracing this platform right now. God is breaking that padlock. That ancient padlock. From our great, 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 great grandfather. He is breaking it by fire, by force. No negotiations. There's a time where God will just leave things to continue. You see like... When Pharaoh thought he's not going to let the children of Israel go. It was God who hardened his heart. So that the day he delivers the children of Israel. It will be clear that they did not escape. God doesn't want you to escape. He wanted to march out. Because the children of Israel. They came out with wealth. When God has finished dealing with your devils. You will come out with wealth. There's no deliverance from poverty to poverty. How do you know you're delivered if you're still in the same thing? That's not deliverance. How can you claim you're outside the water when you're still wet? There must be a difference. When you're outside the water, you are dry. In deliverance, there must be change. You can't be delivered from sickness and you remain sick. That's not deliverance. You can't be delivered from poverty. And you still remain poor. Welcome, welcome my sister Zama. God bless you. Stay with us. When God delivers you. You come out completely. You don't look like before deliverance. But today's deliverance is before and after. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the same. It is because no matter what the men of God will do, people don't do their part. You are being delivered, but you don't play your part. And you will blame it on the men of God. You will blame it on your church. If the men of God preach the Bible, the Bible don't respect what you're going through. It will deal with your situation. But it is up to you. Do you rise, take your bed and walk? Or do you remain there and say, bring me hot chocolate. Bring me this, this. Give me pizza in your bed. God wants you to rise. Take your bed and walk. You can't remain in the place of bondage. You can't remain in the place of bondage. And expect to be in a delivered atmosphere. There's no way that can happen. When you're delivered, walk out, walk out, walk out. Step out of that mentality. This man, for 38 years, he had the wrong mentality. That someone must come and take him and throw him. Hey, everybody there wanted to be healed. No one was going to risk their lives and push someone. That is why for 38 years, he was watching others. Oh, the testimony of brother so and so. Wow, God has blessed him. Wow. God has blessed him. Wow. You have become the cheerleader of everybody else. You have seen the power of God. But nothing is happening because instead of just crawling. 
You can't crawl. You are waiting for you to have more strength. If you don't have strength, sleep next to the pool. When the angel stares it, descend it, and roll into the pool. Some people can't descend until they see something happen. Say, oh, oh, wow, 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 things are happening, things are happening. And the angel is gone. The angel is gone. The angel is gone. God wants to do something extraordinary. He's sick and tired of that ancient prayer that you've been praying from your forefathers. They've been praying for help, 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 and they were not doing anything. And God says, you, you must be the first one in your family to do something. Your family does nothing. What they know is to complain and cry. Run around Sangomas. Run around witches and wizards. Mixing God with Satan. Thinking you will have the answer. That's madness. That's madness. You can't drink the poison. And what deals with the poison at the same time in your body. That's madness. That's madness. God wants us right now. To make a decision. Sleep next to your pool. If you can't jump. Roll when you descend the angel has come. The problem is lack of discernment. We can't descend when the angel has come. We can't descend it. We are waiting to hear so and so has bought three cars. Has got a double story house. Has got a job. She's getting married. He's getting married. Oh wow. Their children are succeeding. Then we start running around. Men of God, pray for me. Pray for me. You must descend when your time has come. Descend it when your time has come. Descend it and act when your time has come. You have to act. You have to act. Otherwise, you'll be blaming all churches. You'll blame the body of Christ. You'll blame Jesus. You'll blame the Holy Spirit. You'll blame God the Father. You'll blame everything. Oh my God, I'm closing this broadcast. I'm closing this broadcast in a minute. And I release the blessing of God right now over your life. And I destroy that spirit of procrastination. That spirit of saying I'll do it tomorrow. I break that devil. That devil of saying tomorrow. I break that tomorrow devil in your mind. That padlock in your mindset that I'll do it tomorrow. Let me see if it works for others. Then I'll respond to it. I break that devil, that padlock of misfortune in your mind. For everything starts in your mind. I break that devil, that chief devil in your life. Your mindset is the chief, you know, witch in your life. Because it's not what they say. It's what you say to yourself. Ah, oh my God, let me close this broadcast and leave you to continue with this in your house, thanking God for the deliverance and beginning to get yourself ready to act. Act, act, act now. The anointing, the stirring of the water is now. Act now. And God will let you go through. Oh, my God. Oh, my time is gone. My time is gone. My time is gone. I'm only left with two minutes and some seconds. Look into your situation and make up your mind. I am tired of this. I'm tired of this. I've tried all men of God and all women of God. And things are working for others. Have you ever taken people to look for jobs somewhere and then they employ them? Have you ever taken some people to a, you know, to a place somewhere and then they got delivered? You got stuck? You became worse and worse? God is releasing this special anointing. Dealing with the padlocks of misfortunes in your life. May God bless you. May his face shine over you. May he open doors for you and refresh you and cover you with the blood of Jesus. There shall be no backlash in your life. After you have this word, hell will not break loose, but heaven will break loose over you. You shall walk under the open heavens. In the name of Jesus, I cover myself. I cover you. I cover everything about our lives. Under the blood of Jesus. And the mighty warriors of God. Will fight on our behalf. In Jesus mighty name. May the good Lord bless you. And from the apostle of worship. APMNs you. Pointing all nations to Jesus Christ. The center of worship. I say shalom. Let's meet on Wednesday. This Wednesday. I'll be posting. My Zoom link on Facebook. 
This Wednesday, I'll be posting that link. I'm expecting you to come. Let's come and break the bread and share the word of God. I'm inviting you into this Wednesday, the day after tomorrow. Let's meet. The link will be there on Facebook so that we may come together via Zoom. It will be via Zoom. We want to be able to sit down, ask. You know, it's a virtual meeting. You ask questions. You know, we talk like that. We can't do that, you know, on Facebook. We need to have a place where you can ask that question so that people should not judge you thinking maybe you know nothing. We don't ask because we are foolish people. But this is a moment where we're going to break the bread and enjoy the word of God. May God bless you.